Phil with us. Yes, Phil just changed his name. Hi, Phil. It's an hey, Moving on. <laughs> we, we, we got things to do today. Amy's got an agenda. I do. I do. And actually, like, my, my biggest thing here is being able to actually get, like, topics or an agenda together for OCI Summit, which is Thursday. Um, September 30th, and it's over in the Hack MD. Oh. Um, yes, and we'd like to be able to actually get things together for that. And I would love to be able to have an agenda that I could tell people about. You had me in a panic when you said Thursday without specifying it. It's like, no, it's not this I, week. I did that on purpose, yes. <laughs> yes. The, 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 like this. This is a carefully designed moment of panic in here that I would like to be able to tell everyone that like here is what we're going to talk about because in large part I'm betting the people that are trying to be able to sign in from wherever don't actually have all day to be able to hang out on the zoom just saying. I'm tired. All right. With that, you did have well, you had the first item. So why don't you that, that was continue. it. That, was, that is the like <laughs> I mean, is, are there things that people want to be able to put at particular times? Are there things that people are really just kind of like, what is our most pressing need right now? Yeah, I think that was the question because I think you started this on uh, the Slack conversation. Did. Of, did we want to agenda? Was it ad hoc? When does the ad hoc turn into an actual agenda? I and mean, I think having some structure, especially as some amount of people will be virtual. I'm not trying to put any weight on it. Correct. <laughs> Correct. It is yeah. just like this is what is true. Phil, Phil, kick us off. Yeah, well, I think that that's the complicating factor because I think when it felt like it, the bulk of people would be in person, it, it's like easier to do a unconference style, like, hey, here's some stickies, everybody write a topic, put it on the board, let's organize them. Now, <clears throat> now that it's maybe leaning more virtual than in person, I think. Uh, I'll just be honest and say I haven't, you know, spent time thinking about it, but but it makes more sense to um, <clears throat> be a little more upfront about what we think the flow of topics and at least some blocks of hours, um, you know, for certain topics. So, yeah, maybe that's, uh, <clears throat> I don't know how specific we can get, but we can at least probably come up with three, four, five, you know, big blocks that make sense to cover and lay them out across the day so the people who are virtual can, you know, I don't know how many people really want to spend eight hours on Zoom. Phil, you have picked up exactly what I wished you to like to, to go run with. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess, you know, we have a pretty good sized crowd here. What are the what are the topics that that people think are pressing or something you kind of expected would be you know resolved or hashed out when we all got together i guess there's sort of two levels of things that we could talk about i mean there's more than two levels but when i think of it there's either going to be something very specific like we're going to talk about the image spec detail x but the kind of thing that i'm sort of curious about and I think would be good for a meeting like this that's going to probably draw in more community members than like just usually the people that are here would be sort of like an open session where you know people can come and the question the high level question can be like what is missing for you what are what are the problems that you're facing when you use these specifications and it could be everything from like oh I have trouble with the documentation um, which definitely I've heard before and that's why we did the, the Jekyll template. Um, or it could be something like very specific, but it's really to just bring people in that you know may not have time or whatever to go to these meetings and just to like hear them out. And I guess like <laughs> the, the issue of course is if no one comes, then we probably want to have something uh, else to talk about in advance. But um, I, forget, I don't know if you'd call it like a town hall or something. I, I'm thinking of Gilmore Girls when they used to have town halls and they'd all come and like they'd like talk about their stuff, like that sort of thing. Uh, well, yeah, I, I don't know anything specific along those lines, but that does bring up, um, you know, what we haven't had here in a little while. It seems like we had a string of it, like er, maybe early this year, 
is people, you know, saying, hey, I, I've been doing something cool and it's related. It maybe is, isn't like a spec change or anything like that. But, you know, anything that people have as kind of a project or something they're playing with, um, you know, we should probably have a block of time for people to share uh, who have, you know, again, maybe people that haven't been able to come to this call at all. Um, all right, Phil, I'm marking that as show and tell um, yep. to be able to make sure that we like actually have time for that as well. Um, but like, you know, what other pieces are coming up that folks would really want to be able to like have just in-depth conversations about? I mean, I'll add obviously the artifact spec. We've released a draft today, which we'll be announcing in a minute. Um, so that, you know, that's kind of that working group problem that we've been trying to solve for a bit. So we we have been making progress on it. We have a draft releasing today. Obviously having that refresh conversation would be interesting. Sargon says OCI2, which OCI yeah, but there were there were a lot of like subtopics around that that you know had hack and D documents and uh, that's a good good reminder that you know, that that may be an area for, you know, now that we have kind of a working group process codified, if, if anyone wants to run with some of those OCI2 ideas, I think they would make good like working group topics. I mean, I somewhat said that jokingly, I think in the OCI2 process, what I found was that there was a lot of different needs that weren't really being talked about or like I didn't even know about for, for the most part and um maybe like out of a show and tell of like hey here are problems we can maybe come up with some common ground to go attack because like yeah the OCI2 proposals were really good but I don't necessarily know if there's any perfect proposal for everyone's problems and maybe if we try to build a perfect proposal for everyone's problems we'll just end up with something that like no one's actually happy with. I think that on the OCO2, I think maybe, maybe this is part of the bigger conversation is breaking it up into which pieces we want to refer to. I mean, there was definitely an image spec to stuff that was going on. Um, you know, we've been talking about wanting to merge the artifact stuff into uh, distribution. Is there other distribution changes we're talking about? Um, there's longer things we were try hoping to do with distribution related to making it a, you know, a package manager for other types as well. Um, so, it, you know, there's a couple of different conversations to cover. And then I don't know how much we want to cover with Run C and others. Those seem to be pretty healthy in their own state. I'd also agree on the confidential computing because even in this topic, I've seen a, a couple of different pieces of it. And um, is it just the persistence? Is it the execution environment? Is it both? I, I think having a broader context of where it fits in will help because uh, I think there's been a lot of different interpretations of what people think uh, encryption or confidential computing could be. Yeah, that's why I said, you know, we could start at the use cases. <laughs> so we, once we understand the scope of the use cases, I think it'll become a little bit more clear. Probably, probably would not sure if those were that. use cases or product and projects. I was, I was actually going to comment on that. It's a, com it's a combination, right? Yeah. I think a part of it too is we, we need to, you know, see who's going to be there um, so that we know we, we, we can, we can cover the topics. And that, that probably goes both directions, Amy. Yes, yes, that, that is actually the challenge there. It's about like the um, uh, getting folks to register requires being able to have something like an agenda. Getting an agenda requires who's going to be there as well. Um, I can work with this right now. Like, I, I think that's a rough, good outline and I can start adding like times to it and that sort of thing. It feels a little thin. I kind of want like two or three more. Oh, these are big. Okay. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, so these are these are all day discussions. <laughs> okay, you know. all right. Uh, yeah, some of them are big. The other thing I thought about tossing in there is, yeah, um, not. It goes back to who's who's going to be there, but 
any kind of time that could be spent on some issue cleanup, you know, walking through the spec repos, issues, PRs. Um, I know VBATS had spent a few calls uh, doing some of that grooming, uh, but yeah, might, might as well put some blocks of time in there for that. No, that's fair. Um, that does give like kind of some good breaks between like discussions and like times when people like that are virtual might not be around for. So, okay. This is better than I had, so I will I will rest and like let we can continue on with like the actual discussion night of the day. Would confidential computing include ugh, the name's escaping me now, but the Linux Foundation came out with a whole set of projects that are sort of around that. And I think containers are highly involved. And I freaking can't remember the name, but they have a .dev website. Or maybe my browser will. The only thing that comes to mind is the Confidential call. Computing Consortium. Is that the one that you're thinking of? Brandon may know more, actually, because Brandon's more involved in the space right now. Uh, are you talking about the six star stuff or something else? Yeah, I think that might have been it. I mean, it uh, six or dot dev is that a website? Yeah, that's it. I guess my, I just I think I, this this probably isn't super related to OCI, but I just I haven't really tried this out yet, and I want to understand like how it's related to containers and, and OCI like more specifically. Um, because right now it's sort of presented as like an initiative and a set of tools and, and all these big companies backing it, which some of you folks on here are from, and I kind of think it would be interesting to better understand it. Yeah, I think the specific, it's like, it has a bunch of broad things. I think the thing that's specific to like OCI would be the cosine project, the sub, the sub project cosine, uh, mainly around like provenance data. For images and artifacts. Is there someone that could like show and tell that or talk about it that we could find? <laughs> I, I would be interested in uh, attending that. And maybe some ideas around, because there are a couple of efforts uh, trying to solve signing. So maybe there's, you know, I don't know whether this might be an ordering thing. You know, this is part of why we've done the, the artifact stuff to try to support multiples without being project specific. And then there are project specific offerings. Like, is there a kind of like the confidential computing? Is there a, a and I put a comment, I put some notes in there. Is there a, an overlay of what the problem is? And then here are some projects and what do the projects need from this body to make themselves, you know, help the community as a whole? And yeah, maybe that's another way to put it. I'm just trying to avoid, hey, here's the project kind of show and tell marketing opportunity as opposed to what does this group actually need to do um, to enable you know, a wide ecosystem of capabilities? Yeah, I think the confidentiality and the provenance and integrity side can also kind of be two different topics as well. I think both of them can go into its own depth. Steve, if you can tell me who to reach out to, I can certainly try to be able to pull them in. My worry is it's kind of short notice, but not the worst. Uh, it, it'd be, you know, me and, and probably Dan, I'm guessing would represent Sigstore, but I, I'd... Okay. Are we thinking about folks for the confidential computing site? I think- Oh, Cal sorry, is that what your question was, Amy? Um, that's a good question. I know of some people at Microsoft that I've been working on that I've been trying to get them more engaged in this community. I don't know if there's a good neutral. Philly looks like you're trying to jump in. Well, yeah. I I went to a bunch of meetings last year when the Confidential Computing Consortium got founded. I guess that's two years ago, not last year. Um, but you know, Red Hat has people involved. Uh, Luke. Um, oh, can't think of his last Hines. name. Luke Hines. Yeah, so Luke Hines, Hines was working on Enclave technology, secure Enclaves. Because I, I assume confidential 
consor uh, confidential computing is more about the uh, you know various hardware and software enclave ideas, which does have crossover to containers. Yeah, there's so there's definitely a crossover. Um, there there's a, an effort Phil underway to create a. Um, they're not SIGs in CNCF. What do they call them? Uh, tags. Tags. The yeah. SIGs stayed with the uh, with Kubernetes project. CNCF moved tags. So they're they're creating a confidential computing tag work you know work group within CNCF to to cover some of the efforts that the CATA container guys have been working on, um, you know, and some of the IBM initiatives that have been going on as well, and and others. There's a lot, a lot of groups, but. Partially driven by CATA, but they're, they're, they're and we, we would probably want to get Sammy O in. Uh, you know, so yeah. But, yeah, I agree. Sammy O is probably a good, good person to talk to that. And I, I don't think they've covered the entire scope of the tool chain or the OCI specs yet. So I think it, it'll help them to get, to get involved with us a little bit more. Um, so they don't, they're not in a silo. Uh, you know, trying to trying to resolve solutions, and then come to us with the fix, right? Be, I think we need to work with them a little bit. Um, but yeah, they're definitely on the, the signature stuff and the scanning. Uh, that that's all related. Although yes, you can do it in hardware only if you wanted to. But again, they probably are going to come all the way around and say, okay, well, wh who do we work with? You know. To, to put these things in a registry and where, where does, you know, how do we keep that secure? It's gonna be an interesting long, you know, discussion, I think, for the use cases. Okay, I have enough to be able to like, kind of like run from here. Um, so I'll start pulling things together. Yeah, we can um, maybe take a crack at it if you if you need help on that, Amy, and then share. Probably it just wake up a different hack MD and kind of like just let everybody go nuts in there. So. Yeah, exactly. We can post that in the OCI channel so people yep. can crowdsource, you know, finalizing it. But that sounds like a good start. Yeah, this 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 gets me better than what I had at like the top of the hour, so we can we can move on. Who is our next folks? Um, Sergeant. Sergeant, floor is yours. Well, that should be Brandon, the encryption stuff. Oh, was it? I'm sorry. I just <laughs> assumed it was Sargon. That's why you're here, Brandon. We can, we can ask Sargon about it, but I'm... I apologize. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think it was kind of mainly, I'm not sure what the Vincent is here. Um, I think the main purpose of this was kind of to, to catch back up on this, see where we are, and then decide whether how we can go forward with, um, I think we had this PR and a bunch of PRs, we had some discussions around it, but then um, we kind of said that, you know, let's let it run for a bit, let's see the, the adoption and see who's using it, and then we'll come back to it with the use cases. Um, so I guess we're having that conversation now. <laughs> yeah, so I kind of added a bunch of links with like uh, uh, where it is now, you know, it's the default and container D cryo uh, with keys on, keys on file system support. Uh, registries um, mostly supported. Uh, and a bunch of things with the OPRs. Um, I think the his what happened last time was we were um, opening a PR against the image back, and then we discussed that instead of having like a single uh, media type or MIME type for um, the different types of encrypted artifacts that we would have it as a suffix, um, and then we created the PR against the artifacts repo um, to add the encrypted suffix. I think that's kind of where we left off. Um, and also I put in a bunch of use cases that, that you know, are actively using this. So like, I think the main one is a container one. 
Uh, but like in IBM Cloud, we also support pooling and decrypting images and, and OpenShift and so on. From the artifact spec perspective, when I last looked at this, it sounded like there was some disagreement on the thrashing on the number of additions and it was not a non-scalable thing. Um, to be honest, I haven't really looked much back at it since. I am curious just because, you know, with the artifacts work, it, the idea is that those media types would be open, so there wouldn't be enforcement on layer media types. So is there something that you're blocked on at this point, or is it certain registries aren't implementing it? Or supporting? I, I think the hope is, um, sorry, Mike, Mike, do you want to go? Yeah, no, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Well, yes, uh, but no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I think the hope is to kind of like um, say that if you if you run into, uh, I think someone else mentioned this the last call, but if you run into this particular media type, you know, uh, maybe back to this, you mentioned it, that like, how do you handle this or like what are different um, um, runtimes or registries that support the use of this particular su uh, suffix. From a registry perspective, I think the what we said is it's just it, we basically ignores it because there's nothing about the blob media types that should matter. The manifest media types matter because there's processing of it, but the blogs are just stored as opaque blobs and they're just served. They're stored and served. Um, having a standard on how people in, in for, you know uh, convey that is certainly interesting, um, and having that. Probably in artifacts would be a good thing to say. Look, if your if your layers are encrypted, here is the convention you should use. Um, I don't know if I'd say must, but because the whole idea is that the the premise of the artifact stuff is it's really up to the owner of the artifact type, and the registries are just storage buckets. It knows how to push, discover, pull, authenticate. You know, for obviously registries that authenticate at least on push, um, and the stuff on the file, it's kind of like the file extension of files on your disk on your computer, it doesn't matter. But the apps that open it know how to interpret those file extensions. But file system API is just like, I don't care what the extension is. You told me to copy file A to copy B, file B or location B, and away it goes. So that's, I guess that's where I got a little bit, at least from the artifact stuff when you know Mike and I looked at it. Um, and I think some, I can't remember. It's about to go back and look at who else was commenting on whether we should merge it or not. Um, there were some questions there. Yeah, I don't think the people that were had questions about it are here. So I want to uh, push back a little bit on blobs being untyped because they're they're typed in the manifests so i think it's it's it would be easy to i don't know think up uh, an implementation that decides to just store different media types in different like backend buckets for example by typed in the manifest you mean for artifacts the proposal I mean like uh, media type the actual, the, the leaf blobs. Right, yeah. but what I'm actually saying is the registries don't care. Like, they, yes, the manifest does have it because it's the way the validation and it's exposed to, like when a client, whether it be the container image tooling or the Helm tooling or an SBOM tooling, when it pulls its manifest, it helps to know what the media types are so it can determine what to do with it. From a registry, it's not supposed to enforce any constraints on what media types are placed on blobs. It's really a, a handoff between the manifest and the blob. But, but that's not true with non-distributable layers. Registries have to understand certain media types in order to pro properly function, right? Um, the non-distributable layers is the anomaly. Right, so we can't just say like least, registry right. ignore layers. This is also well, one of those cases where client versus registry wasn't really called out in the spec, where the spec says that the implementations must support these four and that you know should support other stuff, but doesn't guarantee someone hadn't made a registry that would validate the manifest and say, hey, those aren't valid media types to me. 
in fact, this when you look at because the Brent, um, sorry, uh, Zhao did a list of all registries that support artifacts today, and the majority of them do. Um, there's literally Docker Hub, which is finishing up the work, and Quay, and the two end problem. The reasons that they don't is because they were overly restricting which media types are supported. So to your point, John, they must implement, they must support at least these, so they know about, for instance, foreign layers or non-distributed layers rather. Um, but they're not supposed to be limited to what those types are. And to your point, uh, uh, Brandon, it's other Brandon. Uh, Mitchell, <laughs> you're right. There is this is another place where we we didn't say like obviously the container image format should not care about the Helm chart uh, media types, and it shouldn't ignore them. It should just like so. No, nope, not mine. I guess, I guess the point I'm trying to make, and I wish someone had ideas here about how to resolve it, is that the non-distributability of a layer is embedded within the media type. So if we want non-distributability to apply to new kinds of media types, we either need to create a cross-product list of all possible media types that include the non-distributability in it, uh, or have some guidance about like how non-distributability works, or create some new field that expresses it. Because right now, it's embedded in the media type. And so if we want to have encrypted layers, do we multiply everything by two now, or do we can we fix this somehow? Because it's going to explode. So because the non layers, layers you know, came from the Windows stuff, as far as I know the history of it is, and we're still trying to unravel that, honestly. Like, are there other things besides the Windows layers that are using that? I mean, yeah, sure, why not? I think uh, Red Hat or something wanted to use this. I, I just. I don't think this is for Windows exclusively, right? Like, if if we want this to be a feature of the OCI specification, I that's fine. I just don't. I wanted to move out of the media type. I, I, I don't well, think they're coupled. Well, I mean, so I'm kind of teasing in, you. Do we in want to? Quay at least, this? sorry, in Quay at least, we want to be able to do things intelligently with the media type. Uh, so, like right now, the reason the artifacts aren't fully implemented is because we essentially pushed whitelisting too far down into checking the manifest. But we very much want to be able to offer the ability in, in the registry to deny list or allow list, however, however it gets configured, different media types. So just to riff on, because there's two parts, we're, we're deviating a little bit, which is good because we've had that, it's a good conversation. Now. I think all I'm trying to ask is for the non-distributed layers, is there, should we be investing in that use case and fix it to your point, John? Or should we say, look, there was a thing that was done in hindsight, we wish we were able to flash forward and come back and say, yep, maybe that isn't such the best idea. Um, and leave it as a legacy thing and not let it pollute what we're trying to do going forward. I would ask you to ask Microsoft lawyers about that. And I am, that's what I'm saying. We're trying to unravel that. Like we're literally trying to unravel the reasons right. that we're done and stop that because it is, it actually is a problem for private endpoints and there's a workaround for it, but it kind of destroys the signing and other problems that we're trying to solve. So we are trying to undo that. Um, to go back and double click on where the status of that is. But if for the same reasons we're trying to undo that, I'm hesitant to try to promote that on new things because it was problematic. Do we need to continue problematic patterns? I would I would say maybe open a proposal on the image spec to remove it. Um, we, we don't want to merge that immediately, but uh, at least we could have the conversation there. And if someone has a problem with removing this, then we could. Uh, look into other solutions beyond just removing it. Because like, I, yeah, maybe Microsoft is the only one who cares, but it's quite possible that other companies are using this feature. I wonder if it falls, maybe this isn't the right thread to pull on because we're trying to go back to the encryption thing, but if this is what helps unravel, uh, un, un, enable that conversation, it might be something we put it into reserve, right? Like it was used, 
it needs to be there for a while. Obviously, people are still pulling images that way. We're not going to yank all them down. Hopefully, we'll be able to not do that at some point going forward. But as we know, content goes to registry, stays there for a long time. So I think I wouldn't yank it out of the spec. What I probably would do is switch it to this was a thing. It's reserved now. It's not recommended for future use kind of thing. Yeah, sure. I'd just, uh, yeah, let's start the conversation about that and figure out what our options are. Um, okay. But does that help or hurt? Like if, if we say we won't be doing that pattern going forward, we, I think regardless of whether we yank it out or, or switch, like I think my suggestion would be we should not be recommending people use this anymore. It is very right. problematic. It was done for a reason that was an older licensing technology didn't match a, a container model. Right. Sometimes things don't align in times how technology and lawyers and, and legal licensing get solved. I think we're consolidating on a, a, a viable solution there. The question comes if that was no longer a, a pivot, does that help what Brandon's trying to do with the encrypted media types? Yeah, I mean, this removes a, an objection for me is that it doesn't compose well with. So, like, if we can figure out do Microsoft loggers require encrypted layers be also non-distributable, then that helps. And we can say, OK, we'll punt on this. Uh, you can only have non-distributable legacy media types or whatever. But just figuring out like what we want to do is where I'm at. Because I I don't want to just keep piling on to this uh, cross product. Brandon, what do you think? Yeah, I think I think for the um, for the registry side, based on discussion, it seems seems good. I think um, I feel like there isn't necessarily a special need to handle the encrypted blobs, especially. Um, I think they can just be treated like regular blobs. They can be distributed because you know they wouldn't be able to be decrypted mm -hmm. anyway. Yeah, how do you how do you really know if they're encrypted or not? The only way to know is if we tell you it is. Yeah. So. Yeah. So in in, in that regard, I think I think all is good. But I don't think it's affected much. Um, I think the only question is then, um, do, do we have to um, add some reference into if you see something like that, how do you like handle it or some kind of at least like pointing to other projects and things like that? I didn't fully follow the question, sorry. Um, kind of like um, for like usage, right? Let's say um, because this, this is going to start getting be start being used a bit more given the, the use cases from CATA and things like that. Like, um, should we also have a part of the artifacts repo that says, you know, here are some common uh, media types that you may see, and here's how they can be handled and um, implementations that, that use them. Yeah, I mean, in the artifacts spec, we do talk about the, um, the media types and, some conversation around ordinal and non-ordinal or compressed or otherwise. So it, it does make sense to put there for no other reason than we obviously want to enable this on all types, right? You know, whether it be WASM or, you know, I don't know if Helm's the best example because there's more of a, a, a script, a template script, but there's certainly a lot of other types that are trying to, to store stuff and I'm sure they'd want to be encrypted. So John, I think you had the most feedback pushing back on it there and that was tangled up in this um, uh, you know, the non distributable so we can go back and look at that wording and see if we can untangle that. Does that make sense? Yeah. I, yeah. I, I have a lot of opinions about this. I don't know if. Let's speak your mind. Um, so we can talk about a number of different ways to do this, right? <laughs> one, one with a suffix, one with an annotation, one with the config. <laughs> element you know there's there's many different ways we can do this but you know we need to we need to get something here yeah i i um i do think that the suffix approach is correct um because it's right. something that it composes with any media type right you could encrypt anything um 
Yeah. My only reservation is like as a standards body to just like approve this as a pattern. Uh, when, if we're, if we're going by the book per RFC 6838, um, it would be great to get this actually landed in IANA as a structured syntax in the registry. Um, I understand that's probably like more work than anyone actually wants to do. But if, if we want to do this right, that's the path forward. Um, I don't know how you feel about that. So, so I, for the, I actually did do the IANA registrations, so I can say, so one, I think I primed the path to be able to do new ones because the original goal was, um, well, actually we backed out of it. We said the artifact spec wasn't gonna be the clearinghouse for media types. That's what IANA does. But there is a PR that I've surfaced recently on the artifacts, um, on the ORS artifact stuff as well as here, that we did want to provide a way that artifact owners could reg register their details as it goes through a registry with things like what localized string do they want displayed? Because I don't think any end user wants to see application slash VND dot 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 plus JSON plus encryption. So or encryption wouldn't be on the, the manifest. So there was a, a thing there. And the idea is that the, the dozen or two registry products and services out there could pull in that JSON file that has all of that. So there'd be this magic way that all of a sudden you get icons and localized strings. The problem is um, we as a standards body that want to own that list or you know, then who's to say that those media types are actually owned by the entity. So now we're back to the problem of, okay, Helm, WASM um, need to go register those with IANA. They would register their manifest media types. That's how they get the ownership of that space. I think the question comes back to how many layer media types do we need? So we do have tar, we do have, um, I don't know, there's a couple there because one of the things that I went through with registering IANA media types is there was no concept of a namespace. You don't get to own OCI slash star. It, it's literally the whole thing. So if you want to register tar plus gzip plus encryption, then those are two separate entries and somebody has to register those. So, so this is different yeah. than that. Um, this is a separate process for registering a suffix, which is slightly different from registering a media type itself. I, and it might be harder um, because with a with a media type, they kind of don't care as much with the vendor prefix or the vendor tree. Um, I I did so I pushed on this because of the Z standard thing, and I actually did get Facebook to register plus Z STD as a structured suffix, and it didn't seem to take that long. Uh, but there's precedent here. Um, I do think you'll have to solve this hard problem of like, well, how do we express that something is just generically encrypted? What does that actually mean? And uh, maybe that's, yeah, that's a hard problem. It's, if it is a hard uh... problem, then maybe we need to solve it before merging anything, right? Uh, yeah. So, so that was one of the design points where we, we went back and forth with, which was like, um, for us to make the, the, the layer reusable in a way that we can keep authorizing more people to use the layer, for example, like we had to keep certain encryption data in other parts of the registry or like in the manifest. So then like that object on its own will not be really consumable. So you can't really register it as an encoding because it's not an encoding, theoretically. Uh, you need Is additional. There... Yeah. Could we register it as some encoding that like, I don't know. Is there an like, existing you, coding you, that we could use? I don't know, because you need external information and external data to kind of like decode it, which. It's more makes, of a process. Yeah. That is pretty involved and it's like, yeah. The, the other alternative was like, we had this like, en let's say encrypted zip files, right? And then you put it in, but the issue with encrypted zip files is then, um, you know, you still have to manage the key. And then if you're on the app, recipients, 
um, multiple recipients and you have to use multiple public keys and so on. The reason I pulled up the share, I'm just trying to wonder if I'm answering John's question or not. We did say in this, and I was only familiar because I was just reading it 30 seconds ago, that we've got annotations defined on, I'm assuming that layer. And so you'll have an annotation stored under this or open containers prefix there. And that includes what kinds of ciphers and whatnot they're using. So that would make this somewhat extendable, I believe. Is that, are we on the same page yep. or is John asking something so, different? Uh, slightly different. So like, I don't have a problem with this within the context of OCI, like this makes sense to me. It's that we're leaning on like media type semantics. And so if we want to use media type semantics to express like, this is a thing that is encrypted, then we need to, in the other context of IANA, register this suffix that's like, yeah, any media type could be encrypted. And I'm, I'm suspecting they would push back on something so like generic, you know, without, Without the context of what's an OCI, uh, encryption doesn't really make sense as like this thing to define. Uh, but we probably don't want to define OCI terms over in, like INA as a generic media type suffix. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm almost wondering if it makes sense to push some of this metadata into the blob itself. And so it's uh, kind of like a wrapped blob. The reason why we didn't do that was because if you wanted to now, um, Add this, give someone access to this image, you would have to modify the blob and then you don't get the deduplication and all that again. Hmm. Yeah. So that's why we kind of split like the blob versus the, the keys and the key wrapping and stuff like that. What is it? What does the actual bytes look like or does it depend on the? It's just encryption. It's just random bytes. It's Maybe like plus literally bytes. just a blob. <laughs> blob. Right. Uh, yeah. I, so I, I'm maybe the path forward is to talk to the IANA or someone. I there must be some way to do this well, and I don't know what it is. Well, the the other thought is that we could just make it like encrypted blob media type, and technically you could encode that information. But the issue is like within all the implementation, it seems like they're using the media type to do some stuff, which is like then it becomes a. <laughs> now, now you're configuring the blob. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so so that's where that's where like all this all this trouble came into right where it's just like uh, now I have to like. I need this information. And that's why we couldn't do like a uh, generic, we wanted to do this for the manifest and the config files as well. But like every implementation did it their own way where they did a bunch of random stuff. They, they handled it a different way. So um, I don't know whether we started off as its own media type and then we were like, oh, let's make it a suffix just because it seems like naturally like we want to encrypt other stuff as well but from a standards perspective if we really want to um i i think the other idea that we threw around was we had the ina registry for suffixes but then we have also an oci registry that we also um we also respect within the oci spec on top of that yeah i didn't think we were talking about a generic um <laughs> you know encrypted uh, I didn't think anybody else would use. It. I thought it really was an OCI, uh, you know, encrypted, yeah. like not a. Uh, and that would only be able to be processed if you already had this config and this setup and could execute a certain process. So, I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure whether it's like we can have an addition to the like addition to the registry, having OCI's own suffix registry. Um, or maybe we just do yeah, different types. We, we can't do that without disobeying the INA yeah. who says we should not do that. So I mean, we can say, oh, it's it's media types with extensions. But like then it's not, because Ouch. we're violating, right? So yeah. I, I mean, I But we again, could, we could register literally OCI encryption 
as an extension, right? You could, it yeah. Would be, um, it would be uglier than than you know plus encryption, but it would still be. It might be a little easier, I guess. Is what I'm trying to say. It'd be it'd be ECI as an encrypted container image. Um, I I think the like if we're being adults and doing the right thing, I think you should probably reach out to the internet engineering steering group. Uh, of course, if you don't want to do that, you can tell me, uh, well, whatever you want, but that, that's probably where I would go. If like, we really want to do this right. If we don't want to do this right, then we can ignore it and just merge something. But I would feel warm and fuzzy if we actually reached out to the ITF and, at least once. And I, I'd, I'd be, I'm still, I'm, I think it's more fuzzy to do a, to do, to do a suffix than to change the prefix of you know from OCI to ECI. I don't know. That that sounds just as hard. Yeah. Or oh, we could just register like the ones that are implemented by right? just like the layout. But then if we are doing yeah. yeah. I don't we didn't we didn't know about this issue, John, when when we when, when we were talking with Vince and, and, and et al to uh, to do the suffix. I didn't. I learned more about media types in the past two years than I care to know. Okay, so I'm with you. Yeah. So I, I don't know whether it's going to be like if we're removing well, if the non-distributable layers. Uh, um, it's weird because if you want to encrypt a gzip, you can't. Like, there's no way to express that. Right. It would have it would be because your suffix all apply on top of the blob. So then I guess I mean can't. gzip is a content encoding though. Like zlib is a content encoding. Yeah, but it, it like how the media type is handled, I think that's that's what I'm kind of curious about. Because you're saying there's only one plus extension. You can't do like a plus and a plus. Is that what you can the change concern them. is? You can change them. Yeah, but I, I think the be. the thought is that if we had a single media type for encrypted layers, for example, you couldn't compress and then encrypt it. You would just encrypt it and compress it, which doesn't really quite make too much sense. So you would have to create a new media type, which was like uh dot gzip dot encrypted dot layer or something like that. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, I do think chained extension or chained suffixes are the correct answer. Because, I mean, you could express plus gzip plus e ink, or you could express plus ink plus gzip. It, it would make no sense, but uh, they're both valid, you know, in terms of. So, so valid and make sense, but it will be hell to pay when we go to Diana. Okay, got it. Right. But. Someone should email them and talk about this because they might have they might point us towards something else and it's ongoing efforts. I don't know. Thanks, John. Sargon posted some links in here. Yeah, I mean the this precedence for encryption to be encoding and not a content type. The proposal, like the IETF says that encrypted content should have the content type of just a byte stream and not, it, it shouldn't be part of the, 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 the MIME type. That seems bad, but I'd be interested in their rationale. I, I mean, yeah, I think that if they come up with this, they might have a reason why uh, rather than put it in the media type. Maybe add this to the agenda to read RFC 8188. I mean, like the stuff that we have in the, like the cipher type and the uh, HMAC and so on, they put into the encoding uh, header. So not suggesting that like it's necessarily better. I'm just saying that if they already have a thing.
So this is on, on the wire encoding over HTTP. <laughs> you got decoded into a parallel stream, Sargon, we don't hear you. I mean, yeah, the other based on this, the thought then is like, you would have a layer which points to a piece of metadata which will point to the blob. If you're thinking about it this way. This does bring in the, the, the one of the points I was trying to get from the use cases for confidential computing, which is where, you know, where does it get decrypted? Um, um, for the confidential computing, I believe it's it's going to get decrypted in the VM or within the enclave. Um, so the image is going to get pulled. Um, it'll pass in the blobs, and then the decryption will happen. So and the verification or not not over HTTP. No, no. I well, I'm reading through this. Um, I see that. They're changing the media type to application slash octet stream to avoid exposing information about the content, right? So, like, is is the media type something that should be encrypted uh, or not be exposed? If we're if we don't want to leak the content, is the content type included in that? Right now, we we say that oh, it's a layer, um, just for ease of like handling for for the runtime. Yeah, I guess I would say maybe just set it to application octet stream and uh, you don't get to know the content type of the layer, but maybe that's a terrible idea. Yeah. I mean, the issue with the layer definition now is that, so I mean, all the layers kind of go through this like encoding slash decoding and then use use directly right but if it, in this case you wanted to use the media type which is like byte stream then your your layer could have another field in the manifest that's it but it's encrypted and you have the media what type is, that right so could um this is a terrible idea so uh please tell me why it is what if we would it could you put just like a descriptor of the unencrypted bit as like just the first set of bytes. And so like, if you're processing this, you just read a JSON object and then everything after that is the encrypted payload. Uh, so, or everything after that is the like, the payload of the unencrypted thing. So then, because what this RFC is saying is like the stuff in descriptor right now is something that is sensitive perhaps, the media type of the payload. So could we just concatenate that information with the content somehow. I, I know that sounds gross. Plain, but plain there must text be headers. Plain text headers. The, the, the only thing yeah. about the OCI descriptors, I think, is like it includes the hash, which you don't want to have that. Oh. Yeah, I think he's what? saying, I think he's saying don't count the first 256 bits or bytes yeah. <laughs> when, when calculating the so, shot. So, I mean, we could put it in annotations, right? I think that's also another, another. The the issue I think is like the most of the runtimes use the media type as an indication of how do I handle this, uh, and having like them try and intros introspect the blob and figure that out. I feel like it's a will be a can of worms. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it seems to me the RFC suggestion is a good blanket suggestion, but we we should just actually think about whether exposing the media type actually makes changes the security model of an encrypted blob at all. Right? Cuz if if we're trying to adhere to their standard for a reason that's not valid for for this use case, then it's just making everything more complicated for no benefit. Yeah, I think right now, right now we we do expose the media type, just not the the size and the the digest. If we presumed, John, back to your idea, 
um, that the that it's always encrypted and we always attempt to decrypt it, right? Then 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 we could use that same algorithm to check, and then we could use some header portion of the layer <laughs> to not actually be a layer, but actually to be a text file or something in the layer, right? <laughs> that would they would have the uh, ad additional piece of information that we're looking for that, yes, you're right, this was, en this was encrypted. So, but I don't know, <laughs> I'm, I'm reaching, I'm reaching John as well here. Well, is, is there a use case other than encryption where your layer will be just a bulb of lights? I guess that's the question, right? It's like, but then the, I think maybe the, the, the specification would be in the manifest on how to handle this. Right. Right. So then we could just say media type be. Or even thing. another layer up, you could you could literally throw this in the pod spec, right? All, all images are encrypted. Make it a security context switch. Yeah. Well, I mean, I wouldn't, I don't think making it just uh, an octet stream media type makes a ton of sense because you would want, when looking at the manifest, you would want to know if the needed extra annotations are actually present. Because otherwise you have to devolve into, I don't know, it seems like a very easy trap to fall into to have several different heuristics for interpreting whether all the information that's needed to decrypt is actually there. Yeah, I I don't know what what do what do people feel about like annotations being used for handling media types? Because that could be another way of doing it as well. Well, and looking at the annotations you had, I was debating if it made sense to push stuff into a separate layer that wouldn't be like a file system layer, but it'll be a, like a metadata layer. But I, I didn't bring it up earlier just because I feel like the annotations is a little bit prettier solution. I, I think I think that will work. It it would just be like a huge pain for most of the implementations because they they're like layer equals put it to this <laughs> put it to this system. <laughs> Uh, and then they just add a decoder, right? Uh, so in this case, it will it will complicate the the handling a lot more. I I think we had this discussion within the taming media types issue, where like now we we have a like five different ways to handle handle the media types. Hmm. Oh, or it's six o'clock, at least yeah. East Coast time here. Um, do we want to continue this on into another meeting or follow up in, the, uh, drop. We, in the issues? I, I did get a little. Couple. I did get a little clarity. If it helps, <clears throat> getting the artifacts conversation closed. <clears throat> Excuse me. Even if we did, you know, one we're gonna we're talking about. Can we deprecate? Um, the non-distributed layers. But from removing it from the pivot of encrypted, what Taylor was saying is by definition, they're public. There's no value in encrypting them, at least the way we're thinking about it. So at least we remove that pivot. So I think we can strip, separate the conversation of whether it should be a suffix, all the places it goes, and whether it needs to apply to encrypted. But can we also maybe start messaging uh, non-distributed is not a good thing that you should not consider using. John, what, is that related to this? Or are you talking about something else? Uh, more people to email um, about oh, the encrypted media. Uh, encrypted media types, yeah. If we're pushing away from the non-distributed stuff, is that something OCI wants to consider in the future to mark as deprecated? That's what I'm getting at. Like it's. I don't know if we can mark it deprecated, to be fair. 
I think we could do what we did with the catalog API and say it's reserved and discouraged for future use. I like the feature. I just wish it wasn't in the media type string. That's that's my thing. I'm happy to move it, uh, but also as happy to remove it if nobody cares but me. Why don't we queue this up for next week? Sounds good. All right. Have a good week, folks. Thanks, everybody. Cool, cool. Okay. So, Brandon, are you gonna are you gonna work with uh, Steve a little bit and try to figure out if, what what we can do with the IANA groups? Or yeah, I gotta I gotta get on the 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 Slack. What am I saying? <laughs> All right. Uh, are you guys using IRC or Slack nowadays? Yeah, obviously we got we got to do something with this. Yeah, yeah. Too. We're, right. we're getting there. We're getting there. I said I. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got. I had. I had hair when we started talking about this. <laughs> All right. All right. Take care, Brandon. See ya. See you much.